So I'm going to the bathroom and I see Lim Bramer and I hear his voice and I instantly know who he is. And he's talking to this woman. She's gorgeous. She's like six feet tall. And as I'm passing him, I decide not to interrupt. Figured that wasn't cool to do. But I hear Lynn Bramer say to this woman, You can tell that son of a bitch he can deliver the baby. Put that coffee down. Creators are leaders. Be careful what kind of leaders you're producing here. Helen, we're both in sales. Let me tell you why I suck as a salesman. They realized that to be in power, you didn't need guns or money or even numbers. You just needed the will to do what the other guy wouldn't. I'm not leaving! The show goes on! Well, hello there, friends. Welcome back to the Construction Leadership Podcast. I am your host, Bradley Hartman. And on this show, we bring you ideas and insights from leaders across the country every single week to help you lead more effectively. Now, it is with a bit of a heavy heart that I bring to you this episode today, as this is about an individual that I listen to probably every single day, nearly every single day of my life for more than a decade. And his name was Lynn Bramer. He was a Chicago legend, and he was a DJ on WXRT for several decades. Lynn Bramer passed away at the age of 68 on January 22nd of this year of 2023. And I have a personal story I'd like to share. And I think a few of his mantras that he would say over and over again, that as I think about them continually make me smile are really worth listening in and practicing. So yes, Lynn Bramer was a DJ for WXRT. But he was a lot more than that. When it comes to rock music in Chicago over the past three decades, he was the mayor. And I got out of school in 2000, moved to Chicago a few blocks from Wrigley Field. And being a music fan, I gravitated towards WXRT and immediately fell in love and listened to Lynn Bramer almost every single day. Now, when I moved to Chicago, I took the advice of a mentor of mine at the time who said, listen, Hartman, it's going to be really easy for you to fall into the trap of hanging around with the same people, going to the same bars, and just doing the same thing without expanding your horizons. So he said, listen, here's an easy example. Do you like music? I said, yeah, I love music. He said, okay. My recommendation to you is set a goal. Go see one new show every single month. Once a month, go see a new show. Don't worry about if you've never heard of them. Find someone that you trust. Take the recommendation and break out of your comfort zone. Go see some new shows. Go to new venues. You will find it valuable. And I took him up on that. Now, where did I learn about these new acts and new concerts to go to from people I've never heard of? That was Mr. Lynn Bramer on WXRT. So I started taking his advice and I would go to shows that I had no idea who these individuals were, no idea who these acts were. And I really had a lot of fun exploring Chicago, going to these different venues that ultimately led me to my one very memorable interaction with Lynn Bramer after a show that I went to at Park West featuring Ike Riley opening up for Bob Schneider. Now, in the weeks leading up to this concert, Lynn Bramer was talking about it often, and I felt like he was talking to me. He's like, listen, if you're only going to go to one show this month, you got to come to this one. It's at Park West. I'll be there. It's featuring Ike Riley opening up for Bob Schneider. It's going to change your life. And I had never heard of any of these individuals, yet I had my one concert per month quota. So I rounded up seven or eight of my buddies and we all committed to going down to see this concert of which we didn't know anyone who was playing and didn't know any of their songs. We get to the Park West, which is just a few blocks from Lake Michigan, downtown, and Lynn Bramer gets up on stage and he says this, you, my friends, are in for a treat. You will remember where you were and who you were with this night when you saw Ike Riley open up for Bob Schneider. Now, at this point, I got my buddies who all looked at me and saying, all right, this is what he's saying, but we're going to find out shortly because we don't know any of these guys, and we basically are here on the word of you, Bradley Hartman, and I only came on the word of Mr. Lynn Bramer. So Ike Riley goes up first, 
and he blows the doors off this place. We instantly fall in love. In the subsequent years, we and my friends, we see him another eight or 10 times around Chicago. He was fantastic. Now, it was in between these two sets that I had my first real interaction with Lynn Bramer. So I'm going to the bathroom and I see Lynn Bramer and I hear his voice and I instantly know who he is. And he's talking to this woman. She's gorgeous. She's like six feet tall. And as I'm passing him, I decide not to interrupt. Figured that wasn't cool to do. But I hear Lynn Bramer say to this woman, you can tell that son of a bitch, he can deliver the baby. And I continue walking in the bathroom, fascinated by the context around what would cause Lynn Bramer to say this to this beautiful woman. So I come back out, both the woman and Lynn Bramer, they're gone. And I go back to my buddies and I explain to them what I've just heard. And we're trying to understand what the context might be. I don't know, maybe she's a doctor, maybe she's an OBGYN and somehow Lynn Bramer was giving, you know, her advice on how to manage her colleagues. I don't know. There are many different stories that we were speculating upon, yet none of them seemed to make a whole lot of sense. Next show, Bob Schneider gets up there. Bob Schneider is amazing. And subsequently, we see him another eight or 10 times. As it turns out, Lynn Bramer's proclamation that this would be a memorable night was 100% true. So, Fast forward, I see Lynn Bramer a couple other times in the show. It's a small venue, but I don't approach him at all. I don't try to dig into actually what I heard about the baby and the SOB. I leave that alone. It's midnight. Everybody goes their separate ways. Well, this is a Thursday. This was Thursday, October 18th in 2001. The next morning, I jump in my car. It's 5.15. I'm headed out to the job site. And who do I hear on the radio? Of course, it's a Lynn Bramer. Now, as Lynn Bramer did often, he encouraged his listeners to call in and he stated the number. So I'm driving on I-90, headed out to the suburbs to my construction site. So I punch in the numbers on my Nextel chirp to talk phone. And before I know it, I hear WXRT and it catches me off guard. So I say, oh, is uh, Lynn there? And he goes, yeah, this is Lynn. It's five o'clock in the morning. You think we got interns working at this hour? And I start laughing and I say, oh, hey, how are you? And he goes, I'm great. It's great to be alive. And that was one of his taglines. It's great to be alive. And I said, hey, I got two quick things for you. He says, well, good. He's like, I can hear the ad running in the background. You're listening to what I'm saying. So it's got to be quick. What's up? And I said, well, first off, I do believe your proclamation you made last night at Park West And the only reason I was there and the only reason my buddies were there is because you were talking it up for the last two weeks and you said that this would be one of the greatest shows that we've ever attended. And we would remember where we were on this night that Ike Riley opened up to Bob Schneider and that was incredible. And I just want to say thank you. You're 100% right. Well, you're welcome. He's like, all right, tough guy. What else you got? And I said, well, I have to ask you about the story. I was going to the bathroom in between the sets between Ike Riley and Bob Schneider. And I walked by you and I heard you say, you can tell that son of a bitch, he can deliver the baby. And you were talking to a woman. I said, if you wouldn't mind, what was the context of that story? And the phone went dead. And he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And now I'm reeling. I'm like, what? How could you say something like that and not remember? Now I start stuttering and stammering, trying to get this thing back on the rails. I couldn't imagine he wouldn't remember saying this. And he says, you know, I do have a couple of drinks at these concerts when I go. And I said, yeah, I know. And he says, hey man, I got to go. And I'm like, wait, 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 real quick. This woman was tall. She seems like six feet. She was gorgeous. I walk by again. You say, you tell that son of a bitch, he can deliver the baby. And she starts dying laughing. You don't remember this. And at this point, he absolutely erupts in laughter. And this goes on for several seconds. And finally, he catches his breath. He says, oh my God, that's hilarious that you walked by and you heard that. I did say that. I do remember saying it. That, my friend, was Ike Riley's wife. They have a couple kids and Ike told her recently that he wants one more. And she said, absolutely not. The factory is closed. And my response was to her husband, Ike Riley, you can tell that SOB that if he wants one, he can deliver the baby. So we had a good chuckle and he said, well, I'm glad you enjoyed the concert. I got to go. We're going to be back on the air in literally 10 seconds. And he hangs up the phone. My radio is still on WXRT. 
They come back from commercial and Lynn Bramer says, ah, well, if you went to the show last night with Ike Riley and Bob Schneider, you saw an amazing show and you know that. So thanks for coming out. And for all you construction guys that are getting out at five o'clock in the morning, thanks for listening. And that was my Lynn Bramer story. Now, for the better part of the next 15 years, I listened to Lynn Bramer Monday through Friday and three different times I went and saw him live for the Cubs home opener. He would go to a bar and have a show live from a bar. We'd start drinking at five in the morning and then presumably the Cubs would lose. Often it was snowing on those opening days for the Cubs seasons. Lynn Bramer was consistently smart, funny, entertaining, and he loved interacting with his listeners. And that always made a big impression on me. So I mentioned he had two taglines. The one he said to me, and if you've listened to this show often enough, you've heard me say it to people, it's great to be alive, which I agree. And especially for all of us that have been through different things in our own lives, health-wise, and especially with people we love, it is great to be alive. He had another tagline that always makes me laugh. He would say, this is Lynn Bramer, your best friend in the whole world. And even hearing myself say that now brings a smile to my face. And that's what I will leave you with here today. Thinking of the life of Lynn Bramer and how you can take this forward. If every day you can live it with an understanding that, one, it is a great day to be alive. And number two, that if you can be a best friend to one person in the world, you know what? That's a pretty good day. So Lynn Bramer, thanks for everything and you will be missed. As always, we're gonna close out with our leadership mantra. You, my friend, are owed nothing, deliver value first.